Okay. So obviously when I grab these dumbbells here like this, you can see how my rear delts kind of pop up. You see these bumps up here. Um, that's, that's what you're trying to do is create that bump. You take, bring it up here just like this and you squeeze. Now obviously whenever I'm bringing this up, the, the delt movement is actually pretty short. It's from here to here. Now from here to here is what? That's the back, your traps, your upper traps. You can lose, use a portion of your lats. So this right here, if you're wanting to focus on a little bit of your back, it's okay to put it in. Like if you're watching the Jay Cutler video and he's doing rear delts, he's, he's getting this swing in here and he's using a portion of his back. It's because he's focused on more than just his rear delts, but most people think, oh, well, that's how you do delts. Not necessarily. You want to isolate that muscle by staying within, you know, the range of motion. And this is it right here. Now, rear delts are not responsible for any kind of heavy movement. They're only responsible really for support, support of the delt. And so the kind of weight that you would use is not the same type of weight you would use for your chest or for your back, for your legs. You want to use lighter weight, higher rep, and it's called volume. It's like the more you pump, it's like pushing a, you know, taking an air pump into your tire, you're just shoving blood into that muscle. By shoving blood into that muscle, what you're going to do is stretch that muscle so hard where the fascia, does everybody know what the fascia is? The fascia is a membrane that surrounds the muscle that basically it's like a sack that it's responsible for holding the muscle in place. Like if you were to, I don't know if you've ever gone, gone hunting, but if you, when you skin an animal, when you first take its skin off, it's got this another layer above the muscle that you have to cut through before you get to the actual muscle, and that's the fascia. And the fascia is responsible for just basically holding everything in its place, because without it, it'd be kind of, they could roll over the joints and so on. So that fascia gets really tight. Most of the time when you're stretching, you, you know, you're stretching your hamstrings and stuff like this, and that, you know, that tight burning feeling, that's actually your fascia. Sometimes it can be nerves and stuff like that, but... But most of the actual pain is your fascia, it's not the muscle. The muscle is actually very, very flexible. It, you know, that's what it's made to do. It's made to contract and stretch. So the tightness comes from that fascia. So when you, have, you push blood and you volumize that muscle, you're expanding the fascia, which allows get, you know, the muscle to have more room, and it grows. And then eventually you grow into your pump. I know every guy in here, whenever you're pumping, you look in the mirror like, man, if I could just stay like this. I'm the same way, trust me, no, it never goes away, by the way. You're never big enough to realize, yeah, I'm perfect. <laughs> so, you know, you want to lay down in here, you want to volumize. You know, you start out with light weights, just like this, and you squeeze, and it's kind of like a half a pause, like a minimum, like a, just a minute millisecond that I'm spending at the top. I'm not holding it and stopping it because as soon as I would take that weight and hold it, now it's putting pressure on that joint. It's going to torque the joint a little bit. So I just want to up and squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, just like that. And that is rear delts on this exercise. Obviously, there's a hundred other different ones. You can go to the gym and you see like the Cybex machines where you sit down on there and the, the pad is against your chest and you grab the, uh, it's like a reverse pec deck and do the same thing. The exact same thing as this, except for I'm laying here with dumbbells versus sitting right here with a machine. So you want to take your hips and keep it kind of back so that you're at a slight angle. Don't keep yourself too up in here like this because as soon as you get back, like, like, as soon as you start leaning back, you're going to start using your traps and different muscles. So you want to get your chest against the pad of that machine, screw your hips back, grab the, uh, the bars on that reverse pec deck, and then it's also you straighten your arms to get the full stretch of that rear delt, and as you're pulling it back, the elbows bend to get that contraction, just like that. It's really actually very simple. On the pec deck, do you go all the way back or do you keep your elbows That's the same thing as here. Whenever you, there's a certain point when you hit peak contraction on that muscle. So you don't go all the way back? <laughs> I do, but, but the reason why is because what I'm trying to work on for my body right now is get my upper back really prominent and thick. But for rear delts alone, no. So. It just depends on your physique. That's, it's, everything is so different. That's the crazy thing about watching all these videos that these guys make um, is that, you know, whenever I was 17 years old and I got my first, uh, you know, video, you know, Sean Ray video, or, it, it, you don't know what's going on. All you know is that he grabbed these dumbbells and he did about like this. So you're, you know, hey, you know, but, but what's going on is he's, he's been doing this for 12 years. He knows how to isolate and, and uh, you know, 
he's focused on on different issues. Um, there's one other exercise I'm going to show you for rear delts. Um, if you take a bench just like this and you lay down, now this one you even need lighter weight because this one puts the joint in a little bit more vulnerable state. You can grab a dumbbell. I recommend starting out with literally about two and a half pounds. You can even take a little plate, two and a half pound plate, like this, and just grab it with your hand like this. The important thing here is to keep your elbow kind of locked in one position so that all the stretch comes from your rear delt. Um, and the other thing is to keep your pinky completely uh, vertical, you know, above your, your forefinger. So I'm going to lay down here on the bench like this. I'm going to take this arm and I'm going to keep it straight. Now, as this exercise begins to get a little harder, the arm's going to start to sneak back here like this because that's when your lat and different muscles get involved. So, so whenever you're, you know, you're doing it with your partner or you're doing it by yourself, make sure your arm stays here kind of parallel with your chin, just like this. You're going to keep your arm straight. You're going to stretch it up and squeeze only to parallel. Notice I'm parallel with the ground. Any higher than that, and it's, my, and it's more than just my delt, it's my getting into my back. So here, stretch, and squeeze, and squeeze. And even with this two and a half pounds, I can make myself fatigue pretty quickly. Up and squeeze, just like that. You guys, can everybody see that? Okay, any questions on that one? All rear delt stuff is high reps. Now when I say high reps, what's high, high reps? High reps is above 10. Now, obviously, if I'm grabbing this two and a half pounder, I'm going to warm up with like 20 reps or so. I'm going to throw it down. I'm going to grab five pounds. I'm going to do another 20. If I hit 20, I'm going to throw it down and grab another five pounds heavier. You get to the point to where when you're, when you're about that 10 to 12 mark and, and you're killing yourself to get to 15 reps, that's where you need to be. If you do get to 15 reps pretty easily, you need to go up 15 to 20 reps. You need to push yourself on the weight. I don't mean grab all the light weight and just kind of have fun with it. You need to make sure that you push yourself, um, you know, make sure you're working. 20 reps is what I mean by high reps. Um, the weight is also relative, you know. I mean, Ronnie Coleman can grab 80-pound dumbbells and do lateral raises, you know. Not very many guys can do that um, and have it and do it right and not hurt themselves. So it's, it's relative to him. 80 pounds to him is like 10 or you know, 20 pounds to me or whatever, you know, it just depends on the individual. Those three exercises right there are totally sufficient for rear delts. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more. You can, you can grab a cable. You can bend over and grab the cable and do the same thing here. You can do the same thing with a dumbbell, you know, just bending over. Um, there's a lot of different ways, but the most important thing in your delt routine is your rear delts. That was, that's the most important thing. You want to establish stability within the joint and get that rear delt to where it can support just, you know, equally, uh, just like the front delt, medial delt, and trap. So you have a, a balanced, balanced delt. And then aesthetically, from the back, when you're standing in quarter turns or, you know, your rear double bicep, it just creates that balance. It's, that, it's, it's not a missing body part.